bopping out of the first gear BMW E90 chassis from 2006 to 2010 I believe this transmission came in I took it off to take it apart to see if I can fix it because I couldn't find any information online about it nothing there's no videos about it it's a 217 they call it get 217 it's a GS6 dash 17 BG I believe and because I couldn't find any information about it I took it apart incorrectly I took the rear portion of it off first and that's the wrong way of doing it the first bell housing has to come off first but it doesn't matter because uh, I can already see that both second gear and the first gear is is worn out the reason why I, I didn't know how the condition of the second gear basically I have to start the car from second gear because it was popping out of the first so probably the second gear is, is I can already see it's it's in a bad shape and here what I'm doing right here is actuating the collar to the dock teeth of the gear now it's engaged in the second gear and I'm looking at the synchronizers and there's about a one millimeter space between the first gear and the synchronizer that tells me that the synchronizer is good it's it's made out of the brass and what it does it, it stops the gear from spinning when shifting so the gear wouldn't grind and that appears to be good because I didn't have any grinds when I was shifting the transition in first gear but I will pop out and I already check in the synchronizer in the second gear and as you can see there's like about a one millimeter gap so it's good still when it's worn out it'll, it'll be flush with the gear and what I'm trying to focus on are doing at these dog teeth where the collar engages and you can see in the second gear is kind of grinded off the face of it and if you look at this one I think this is a third gear and it's perfect there's no damage at all on the teeth see that's the collar from third to fourth I believe the forks these are the forks and they're made out of the steel and basically what I thought was uh, one of the forks got bent probably but now that I'm looking at it all these forks they're really built tough and there are these there are these plastic engagers you know that go into that collar and they engage in that collar and I also believe that probably one of those plastics is worn out but when I took everything apart and looked at it it's all good all the forks are good now I'm gonna explain how to take apart this transmission properly basically you're gonna take out the plug there's there's a seal plug for the counter shaft and there's a hex bolt right there that needs to be removed then you remove this collar and you get to the seal to the input shaft seal you remove the seal then there's going to be a c-clip or c-ring on the input shaft you have to remove that you can see it right there then you're going to press on it you're going to press on the both of them at the same time you're going to have you're going to put the bell housing in the jig and you're going to press on both of them at the same time you're gonna remove all the bolts obviously before that you're gonna remove all the in, in the holders for the forks everything around the transmission that you see on the on the front part the bell housing part so you're gonna take those those hold the 
forks you're gonna take the vent off and then you're gonna press you can put the jig on the bell housing see that's the factory placement for the jig obviously I don't have that so I, I use like two two metal bars underneath and I pressed on the main uh, input shaft a little bit and then I switched back to the you know I couldn't press both at the same time so I pressed one and then switched to the other one and pressed the other one and it came up came off now when you get the bell housing off then you're gonna have the rear section with all the gears and forks in it so you're gonna take all the keepers out everything that you see that's bolted on the side you're gonna take the output shaft output flange off with a 30 millimeter long socket and then you're gonna press you're gonna press on the output shaft in and then that's how you're gonna separate all the junk or I mean all the all the guts out of the rear portion of the housing and obviously you're gonna have all the proper jigs to remove all the gears you need the quality press and jigs to remove the gears I'm looking at the synchronizer for the first gear and it, as I expected it looks good I mean it's not it's not worn out there's, it's like a three-piece synchronizer for the first gear and then I'm looking at the collar and then I'm looking like the at the first gear that failed and obviously I can see the issue right away these dog teeth they're they're made short they're made extremely short and once they wear out just a little bit from improper driving most of the people in the United States are not good with manual transmissions and they just force the first gear when they're driving and they're slowing down and they're going from second to first in order to put in the first gear again the car has to be at the complete stop and if you force it you're gonna grind the the first gear and it looks like it, it's a delicate design of this transmission where the dog teeth are extremely short and I believe Getrog made this transmission so it you know it, it feels so smooth shifting see these these are all grounded down and then when the collar engages there's not enough of them for the collar to properly engage and pops out I'm looking at I'm showing you the third gear and you can see these dog teeth they're tapered in away from the collar they're kind of tapered in and they're wider towards the collar that means that when the collar engages and you put the force in the transmission the force of it prevents prevents it prevents the collar from popping out and in this case because the dog um, dog teeth on this gear are so short meaning that after they wore out just a little bit there's not enough taper to hold the collar on see that's the collar and and so basically the dog teeth on the gear and dog teeth on the collar are slightly worn out and there's not enough uh, space for them to engage properly anymore and they they pops out of the gear and uh, first gear is always used the most so that's the reason why and obviously the first gear is going to fail and you're going to quit driving you're not going to drive the car around but you can see the face towards the second gear it's much better all the teeth towards the second gear are much uh, smoother and here you can see how it's also tapered on the collar so when it engages it wouldn't pop off see that's where those dog teeth go I'm showing you the third and uh, fourth I believe and you can see the fourth gear is, is like really good all the teeth are like intact it, and you can see how they tapered and the, and the collar engages it, it's snug in there and then when when there's force put on that 
it prevents that color from popping off. See, like in proper driving, forcing the gears and grinding the gears, that's what happens. Obviously, this transmission cannot tolerate that. That's the second gear. It's a little bit better than the uh, first gear. That's why it was still okay. So obviously, you're gonna. The only people that sell the new first gear are some some company in Europe, and it's like four hundred dollars. Plus, I have to buy it over there and import it. Get truck. So obviously, for me, it's not. You know, it's not worth it, so I'm just going to take these parts off and save them. Some of the parts off and then junk everything, the rest, you know, it's it's not worth fixing the transmission because the two gears will cost more than $1,000 and you can buy another one of these. Basically, I bought another car that was running and that has a good transmission for uh, like $1,000, so it's it's not worth fixing this in the United States, but in Europe they do it all the time. Thumbs up, guys. If you like this video, I'll see you later. This is an inspection camera that I try to use through filler plug, through oil filler plug on this transmission, but I didn't know what I was looking at. But now I know what to look for. I was looking at the fork, and the forks are fine, obviously, but in this video, you can see you'll be able to see the first gear the dog teeth on the first gear so if you ever come up with one of these transmissions for sale you can select the second gear take out the filler port oil filler port on the side and then stick a spy camera inside or inspection camera inside and look at the behind the collar like right now, right now you can see it. Uh, none of the gears are selected, but you can see the first gear, the the dog teeth of the first gear. You can barely see it there, but they're not in the good shape. And that's how you can uh, inspect this transmission before buying one. So if those, if the face of those dog dog teeth are all grinded down, then don't buy the transmission. And that's how you'll know thank you for watching support the channel uh, with your subscription and i'll see you i'll see you in another bmw video <laughs>